Once the preferred site for the effluent pond has been identified, the next step is to dig a test pit to show the water table level. A day or so after the pit has been dug, the level of the water table is revealed and assuming it's actually lower than the planned pond depth, full excavation can then be undertaken. Next, drainage beneath the pond has to be installed to take away any groundwater which could otherwise come up under the pond liner. If there's some sort of suspicion that the liner may have been damaged or may be leaking, my first point of call would be to go and examine the water that has been collected or the leachate that has been collected from the water drainage network from underneath the liner. So it's important to have good coverage of uh, a drain coil trenched in through the base. There are a variety of different products that can be used for collecting water. They should all be wrapped with a geotextile or a filter sock so that they don't clog up. And effectively, looking at the exit point going into the creek, it should just be clean water which is being discharged. With excavation completed and drainage installed, work on lining the pond can begin. This starts with putting in a system to drain any gas which may come up through the soil beneath the pond liner. Well what we do is we build these ponds um, with a fall in the base um, to one end and then we also have a, from the sides we have a fall to the centre um, which creates some slope, um, one, one for if you want to drain the pond but two to help the gas escape um, and then we lay this gas um, drainage system which helps it even more. Uh, these little little membrane things here um, are designed so that the gas can dissipate up through them um, and even, even if in an event of a very high water table the water table could hit under here um, and then the gas could still escape between these little bubbles um, and the liner. On top of the gas drainage system, it's international best practice to lay a geotech-style underlay. This will protect the pond liner from any sharp stones or protrusions underneath and help stabilise the sides of the pond. Um, when it's underneath for the liner like that, you, you can see it's um, really hard to pen you, you know, it'd take a bit to penetrate it. You know. um, it, it is really good protection for it. Um, and depending on the, uh, the area or the, the type of soil um, the pond's been laid in, we can use different grades of geotech soil. Um, it does add to the cost, but it is the correct way to actually design and build a pond. Failure to, to do um, a geotextile underliner can leave some sharp stones underneath, which basically can create some pressure points or some isolated protrusions underneath the liner. This can cause complications later on down the line. With the groundwater drainage system laid, gas drainage installed and the geotech style underlay down, the pond liner itself can be put in. There are a variety of synthetic liners on the market in a range of widths and a range of prices. This pond is being lined with a synthetic rubber membrane. The seams in the liner are welded together using a vulcanising primer tape system and to make sure the seams can cope with friction created by pond stirrers, a cover strip is added. This provides additional leak protection and strengthening. The final step before the pond is ready to hold effluent is to pressure test the seams with an air lance, an internationally recognised method. And after a few finishing touches, the new pond is ready to store effluent from the car shed.